If you are familiar with my content, you know that I personally am not the biggest fan of G5, and I'm kinda known for pointing out its imperfections. But, I don't wanna be someone who just whines and complains all the time. That's not fun. If I can, I like to offer some solutions to problems, so in this video, I will be going through each episode of Make Your Mark Chapter 2, and I'm only allowed to offer one change per episode that I think would help improve the story. If you don't like my changes, feel free to drop a comment explaining why my ideas are stupid. Episode 1, Izzy Doesn't. This episode has a lot going for it. It has good humor, Izzy's character is well done, the music is pretty catchy, but I don't actually want to change anything to do with the main characters or the main plotline. Instead, I want to change the very first interaction we see between Opaline and Misty. Specifically, it's the exposition delivery as to why Misty serves Opaline. Because she's like, oh hey, remember that time you were all alone and I rescued you as a filly? Yeah, you owe me for that for the rest of your life. Rather than this suddenly coming up out of nowhere, what if there was an actual reason for the topic to come up? Maybe there's an item from Misty's past that she has kept with her since the day Opaline found her. Maybe it's the one thing she has to remember what her life was like as a filly. It could be a doll, a locket, or anything really. Misty could perhaps start fiddling with it and Opaline could tell her to stop living in the past. She belongs to her now, and her prior life bears no importance. Literally the only change here is introducing a more natural way for the exposition to come up. This also introduces a new element to the story that could be used in later episodes to build on Misty's character. Is this too cliche? I feel like this might be too cliche. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Hey, future Star Strike here. So I was just watching one of the newer episodes for Tell Your Tale, and Misty actually has an amulet that she carries around. Opaline then uses this amulet as a method to spy on every pony. So what if the item from Misty's past was this amulet? I think Opaline would be the kind of pony to destroy anything Misty had from her past. But if this amulet has magical properties that Opaline can use, such as spying on ponies, that would explain why she lets Misty keep it. I now return you to the present. Episode 2 growing pains. I stated in my review of chapter 2 that in my opinion, Twilight's message was the worst part of the entire show. I know! Most people say it's the best part. I'm weird. But despite the fact that I don't like it so much, I'm actually not going to change anything to do with it. Because changing the problems I have with it would also affect other episodes. And I'm trying to limit myself to only one single change per episode. So instead, I want to focus on how this episode's conflict was resolved. In case you don't remember, or just haven't seen it, Earth Pony Magic started going haywire, and plants started growing out of control. The way that they resolved this issue was by literally just telling Earth Ponies to control their magic. And that instantly fixed everything. If it's that easy, are you seriously telling me that no pony even tried to just control their magic? How about instead, we get a story similar to what we saw in Tell Your Tale, with Zip teaching Pegasi how to fly. Only this time, it's Sprout that immediately gets the hang of magic. And now the main cast are trying to convince him to teach every pony how to use it. Sprout doesn't want to, seeing as how he likes being the only Earth Pony with a knack for magic, but reluctantly agrees as this would count towards the community service he has had to do ever since the events of the movie. It was also never made clear if community service is what we see him doing in this scene or not, so it would also clear that up. Killing two birds with one stone. The ponies he's teaching could start thanking him as they get more skilled at magic, and with this, Sprout could have an arc where he learns that helping others feels good, as every pony around him is so appreciative of him teaching them. Maybe by the end of the episode he has fulfilled his quota, but still chooses to teach others out of the kindness of his heart. Well, of course, still boasting about how he is the absolute best at magic. Baby steps for this guy. Seriously, I love this character and I want to see more of him. Episode 3, Portrait for a Princess. Honestly, I wouldn't change much in this episode. It's pretty good. It does still suffer from the repetitive plotline of Opaline trying something evil then failing, but other than those types of things that plague the entire series as a whole, this is actually a really well-written episode that does a fantastic job with Pip and Zip's characters. Plus, this episode has what is my favorite song out of the whole series, but... I was really disappointed that it was so short. I don't think it would hurt if it were just a little bit longer. So if I could change anything, it wouldn't be some massive alteration to the plot. Just make this one song a verse or two longer. Episode 4. Oh gosh. <sighs> Ali Cond. We immediately go from the best episode in the whole series to the absolute worst. This entire episode is one big oof. This episode is all over the place. So many areas to fix, but I think the one area that needs the most care is Sunny's character. So let's focus on that. The main problem with Sunny is that she has no personal drive, desire, or passion beyond I want to help ponies. There needs to be something deeper there, something more specific than just generalized helping depending on whatever the plot demands that day. What exactly do you want to do to help other ponies? There needs to be something that she can pursue across multiple episodes. And certainly 
certainly not something that her friends accomplish for her. They can help, sure, but at the end of the day, whatever she does needs to be her achievement. So what do we know about Sunny? We know that she likes helping ponies, rollerblading, Actually, that's about it. Sunny is a blank slate, which is really bad given that she's the main character. Okay, so what else do we have to work off of? Um, oh, I got it. Argyle was a historian, right? And Sunny is interested in helping others as well as the history of Equestria. So what if she continued her father's research and opened a new museum to teach other ponies the true history of Equestria, seeing as how all their history books were filled with lies, as we learned in the movie? Those are lies! Well, uh, that is kind of what our teacher said in history class. It helps ponies, which we already know she wants to do. It's something that she can work on and pursue for future episodes, gives us a chance to learn more about Argyle, learn what happened to Equestria in the main six, and could serve as a way for them to learn more about Opaline so that we can actually start moving the plot for the entire series forward. It's the perfect setup! Just remove the whole community garden thing and replace it with a museum. If they really just want to have one in the show, I don't see why we need an entire origin story for it. I mean, we didn't get a construction of the Crystal Bright House, so I don't think the garden needs its own episode. It can just come with the Bright House. Episode 5, Cutie Mark Mix-Up. Remember the olden days when dragon magic was limited to just fire breath, molting, and the call of the dragon lord? Well, get with the times, Gramps, because dragon magic can now do literally anything. Instead of Sparky's magic doing random stuff for no reason other than the plot demands it, what if instead, Kitchen Sunny swapping cutie marks was part of a plan by Opaline? Maybe she could have planned on having Misty use a potion to steal cutie marks from the main five so that she could drain the magic from them, but Misty, being her clumsy self, messes up and causes Hitch and Sunny to swap cutie marks. We can essentially have the same plot, we're just removing the power of swapping cutie marks from Sparky, who we know shouldn't be able to do that and instead giving it to a character whose magic we do not fully understand. Episode 6, The Traditional Unicorn Sleepover. Honestly, not a bad episode. But like the rest of the show, every time it tries to tie itself into G4, it raises more questions than it answers. So really? I just want to have more stories about the history of Equestria, or spend a longer time on the one we were given to help clear things up. Because the longer we sit here confused without being given any real answers, the harder it is to get invested. Or at least it is for me. I might be in the minority on that one. Then again, every time they touch G4, they seem to break something, so maybe we're better off with no stories. Episode 7. Oof, done it. What would I change? That stupid lantern being buried in the garden. Why? Misty had the lantern she was told to steal, managed to sneak it past the main five, then randomly decided to bury it in the garden. Except she didn't even do that. She dug a hole half as deep as it needed to be, then just dropped it in there for them to find the next morning and went back to bed. Easy fix here. Have Zip catch Misty leaving the Bright House, unaware that she's carrying the lantern in a bag. Misty sees Zip rushing after her. Misty then needs a place to hide the lantern before Zip can see it, so she tosses it into some plants in the garden. Zip flies over to her, asking what she is doing outside so late. Misty tells her that she got hungry and came to the garden for a snack. Zip then escorts her back inside, and since Zip has always been so suspicious of Misty, she doesn't fall asleep until after Misty does to make sure that she doesn't get up to anything, making her unable to go back outside and get the lantern. The episode can then carry on as normal. Thing is, this is already so incredibly similar to what already happened. Zip does come extremely close to catching Misty hiding the lantern in the garden. So I'm kind of surprised they didn't do it. It's like they knew what I wanted, dangled it in front of my face, and then snatched it away. Episode 8. Have you seen this dragon? Before I get into what I would have done differently with this episode, I want to explain something real quick. After giving it a lot of thought, my biggest problem with G5 isn't so much what it is, but rather what it could have been. I look at this show and I see massive potential for stories, characters, world building, etc., but so much of that potential feels untapped. And I want to show people how with a few small changes or additions, they could have added so much to really elevate this series. If we ignore how all of this connects to G5, for, they actually have a pretty good setup for some really interesting stories. They just need to do a little more to push it beyond what it currently is. And they could have a fantastic show on their hands. Anyway, episode 8. This episode was not bad. However, there was one part that was so close to being really well done, but did one thing that instantly pulled me out of the episode. Sing along! The cutie mark magic is amplifying the sound! This! This is one of the biggest problems G5 has. Magic no longer has any rhyme or reason. How the heck does cutie mark magic amplify sound? And 
Why? It's so random and out of nowhere. What was their plan if the cutie marks didn't just so happen to amplify sound? Look, easy fix. Just have the characters go into main melody, grab those massive speakers, hook them up the pips mic, and boom, amplified sound. There's no need for this weird, contrived cutie mark thing. Now, these are all individual solutions to problems contained within each episode. But if I could make one change that would affect the entire show, what would it be? Hmm. Please, please, hold your applause. There's no need to thank me. It's all in a day's work. Uh-oh. Yay! Make you pay. Hey, did you know that I made an entire video attempting to fix the crystals? Yeah, they have about a million problems. But I think I came up with a pretty good story alternative and solution in that video. You should check it out. Yay!